Hi there, happy hump day and it's Wednesday. Hope you are having an amazing week. Think about life, life often throws us curveballs. And you know, it can be really easy to think that everybody can have it all. And I always love the quote from Dame Quentin Bryce who says, yeah, sure, you can have it all, just not at the same time. And so when you recognize that no one gets everything they want all the time, that life is full of the ups, the downs, and that there are curveballs that will always come your way. You're better able to then work out what you can do to put your best self forward every single time. So here's some ideas, six things that you can do to better respond when that curveball comes your way. So number one, let's get deliberate. Life is a series of trade-offs. And what I mean by that is when you're choosing to do one thing, you're by default often choosing to do, not do something else. So get deliberate. What do you want to get out of life? What matters the most to you? Because when you're really clear on your priorities and what matters, it's much easier to make that trade-off choice. When you talk to people who are successful in life, you know, be it in business or in the arts or in athletics, they'll often recount stories of things that they gave up, the sacrifice that they made, because they knew that by making that sacrifice, it would help them get somewhere that they really wanted to get to. Number two, embrace the uncertainty. There's always gonna be uncertainty when you're chasing something that you haven't done before. You know, success doesn't happen by accident. It's a result of hard work, experimentation, failure, and that kind of bounce back mindset. So rather than seeing the uncertainty as a bad thing, you can actually see it as a good thing because when you're uncertain, it's just a, an example, a demonstration that you're doing something that you haven't done before. And that's good because if you always do the same thing again and again and again and again, you'll never uncover what could be possible. Number three, reframe the game. You know, we don't always get what we want. And I certainly learned that in my personal life when my husband and I discovered that we couldn't have children. So it was an outcome that we had no control over, but we still had choices. And what we chose to do was reframe our life and starting with writing a list of everything that we could do because we didn't have children. Now, this didn't mean that we weren't sad at times, but it helped us refocus and move through the situation. Number four, give yourself a break. Now, being kind to yourself doesn't mean you sit all day in your tracksuit, eating chocolate, drinking red wine, or whatever it is that you like to do to unwind or make yourself feel better when things aren't going to plan. But what it does mean is that you accept the reality of your situation and you also accept the fact that sometimes life sucks because it's not working out to plan. So you don't ignore your feelings, but nor do you wallow in them. Instead, pick yourself up. You dust yourself off, you learn from the experience and you keep going. Number five, write your script. We all like to be liked and we all want to be respected and to be valued. And often as a consequence of that, it can be really easy to absorb the expectations of others, to do what others want you to do. And often people will have a long list of things that they think that you should do. And that long list might be filled with good intentions from them and may have good ideas and things that you should take up. But be really careful about taking on the ideas, the assumptions and the expectations that other people have. Because if you do that, you end up living your life according to someone else's rules and ideas, rather than living them to your own ideals. So work out what it is that you want in life and don't compare yourself to others. It's really easy to play the comparison game, but it doesn't help you. It doesn't make you feel good about your life or what you're doing. Number six, drop the brave face. For our own mental health and well-being, we really need to feel comfortable when we can to say, hey, this isn't good and I'm not okay. And I need to talk it through and I need some help. And I know for some people that can be really, really hard. But when we stop sharing, when we feel like we have to be happy all the time and upbeat all the time, 
when we deny the real emotions that sit within us, that can eat us away. And it also puts enormous additional stress and strain. So it's healthy to talk about how we're feeling because when you get it out, you can then work through what it is that you want to do with it. You know, there's no doubt that the world is an amazing place, but it can also be a pretty tough ride on occasions. But it's far harder when we're putting additional pressure on ourselves to lead this so-called perfect life. There is no perfect life. It's just the life that we all get to live and choose to live. But when it's not perfect, you can also make choices to work out which elements around that you want to tweak and change. Because whilst it's not perfect, there are still so many aspects that are amazing. So whatever it is you're doing today, I hope it's a great day. Take care and I'll see you next week.